Well, good morning. Hello. How's everybody feeling this morning? Are we good? Let's just stand up. Are y'all ready to worship? We're going to worship. Holy is the Lord. We will stand up and lift our hands. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome he is. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy. Let's give the Lord a clap offering, amen? Tell him good morning. Take a moment. Right now, just say, good morning, Lord. Hallelujah. I heard a couple of you got that backwards. You said, oh, Lord, it's morning, right? Before you sit down this morning, go find somebody you don't know. Extend your right hand of fellowship. Get to meet them, know them, share your name, and learn their name. God bless you as you do. Mingle around a little bit.
My goodness, you guys act like you like one another. Give me just a second. Let me sit down. There you go. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> All right, turn the lights out. All right, let's find a chair to sit in. Or turn around and park it, one of the two. So good to see everybody today. Y'all look good this morning. Here you go, my brother, my friend. It's good when your brothers are your friends, right? Right? The, uh, if we've not met, my name's Preston Smith. I'm the pastor here at the bridge. And in a moment, you can come on up, sweetheart. This is my wife, Carla, with a K. And she's got an announcement to share with y'all, please. There you go. Take your liberty. Preach if you want to. Okay. So how many of you like to give? Okay. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to give. Um, we have a couple here that is going to have a baby. Yeah. So Nathaniel, will you please stand up? And Cheyenne. Put the spotlight on her over there. Yay. They are going to have a baby boy named Raylan, R-A-Y-L-A-N. And um, we are going to set a table up for them next Sunday. And so uh, it's going to be like a table shower. So you can bring a gift uh, next Sunday, which is the 21st and the following Sunday, the 28th. And you can just put your gift on the table. And uh, she, Cheyenne, is registered at Walmart. So just, it's a real easy register. You just go to Walmart registry and type in Cheyenne. And, and if you didn't get a little invitation, or we have them back here, and the uh, uh, greeters will give you one with all the information so I hope you will th these two this couple serves the bridge so faithfully and they live so far away I just really want to bless them so I hope everyone participates in this okay thank you Someone asked me one day, does my wife preach? And I said, well, sometimes publicly, but at the house quite regularly. And uh, <laughs> she's full of the word of God, right? And uh, she is. She's a good preacher. She can remind you. I'm going to do something. All you guys in the back, if you can help me, please, ushers and usherettes. If you are a household and you've not received an invitation, we have some. Would you raise your hand? We're going to get you one. Any Households that did not receive. Well, my goodness, let's thank the greeters for doing a great job. Thank you for your service, right? Our, our next announcement this morning is uh, one week from today, next Sunday, we have Vision Sunday, and we call that a family meeting. So if you're a part of the Bridge family, we want you to come. If you're a guest, you're welcome to come. We have no secrets, and we'd welcome you here also. It's not a private meeting in any way, but uh, it's time for us to look at what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. Y'all connect with me. Look at what the Lord has done. Everybody say, yes, Pastor. Yes. Yeah, right. See what the Lord is doing. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. And what the Lord wants to do in our future. Amen. Amen. Right, and it's important. That's what vision is all about, understanding your assignment and how you're going to get there, right? And it's time to talk about how we're going to get there a little bit more, okay? So everybody, make sure you are here in the service next Sunday. It's going to be a good time. We have a lot to celebrate and a lot to share about our future, okay? Praise the Lord. Let's say good morning to our online congregation. Can we welcome them today? God bless you. And uh, if you're attending right now, and I hope I'll remember to say this again, and maybe we can put a reminder, Nathaniel, out there. I don't know who's on Facebook that can do that or whoever. Uh, if you can, make a, go to the comments and make a comment. We actually try to keep attendance and keep up with who 
belong to the bridge. Now, if you're a guest on there today, you can say, hey, I'm a guest, and we'll connect you as best as we possibly can. We have a lot of folks that attend church by the online vehicle, right? And we're glad you're here this morning, right, church? Yes. Amen. Amen. So, welcome and make a comment, right? And uh, if any of you are on Facebook watching today that are in the church, I see some folks not here, make a comment. Please comment and let us know you're here today. That'd be very helpful to us. Praise the Lord. Everybody okay? Yes. Missed you last week. Is it good to be missed? It's noticeable, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's stand all over the house today. How many of you are ready to go shopping? Okay, shoppers, any shoppers? If you had all the money you need, I know, Hannah. She's about to graduate. She had her prom. Was it prom this weekend? It's, I saw some pictures, graduation pictures, right? But somebody else had prom pictures up already. Oh, that was your granddaughter, Mom Proctor. Yes, she had prom. See, I just get all these pretty girls mixed up, right? And... Uh, how many of you want to take a trip to Hawaii, right? Come on now. I, I, I want you to be honest. I've never been to Hawaii, have we? Do you want to go? Okay, we need to think about that. We need to go to Hawaii sometime, right? Right? If you don't raise your hand, you might not get to go. Uh, how many of you would like to go to the deer camp and work with me, right? Uh, okay, good. Ron Kelly, well, Hannah would too. Yes, yes. And uh, that's, that's, that's a different kind of fun. How many of you want to go play golf today after church, right? We have any golfers in the house? No. How many of you want to go to the gun range and burn some powder? There you go. Got a few more, right? How many of you want to worship the Lord today? You know, that's something we get to do together. It's a common denominator that we all share, right? And there's one place that we can all gather, and that's at the throne of God and worship our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Let's worship.
the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Sweeping in the room. Here comes heaven. Here comes heaven. It is sweeping in the
Online church, lift your hands up to the Lord and just say to the Lord, make a declaration of faith, oh Lord, you are holy. <laughs> oh God, you are worthy. Yes, worship the Lord. Just lift him up today. Make him bigger, bigger than you've ever seen or known him before. He's a great God and mighty to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we lift up to you this morning. Walt and Pam Hall and Gino Falgu, in Jesus' name, Lord. We're asking you to touch Gino's body, Lord. Strengthen him, heal him, minister to him, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, glory to God. Hallelujah. Don Robinson, Lord, from the test, Lord, that he had. I need you to pray with me. No cancer in Don's body in Jesus' name. All cancer, symptoms of cancer, thoughts of cancer, gone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There is power in corporate prayer when you get a room, any room. Jesus said the room can be as small as two people agreeing together and it can be as great as a nation agreeing together, right? Come on, Lord Jesus, move. In the hearts and lives that are here in this room and online today, and those who will come back and watch this service online in the future, Lord, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just praise him. God bless you. You may be seated this morning. We're going to receive our morning tithes and offering. Can we give joyfully? Help me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I trust the Lord has blessed you since the last time you got paid at least. Come on now, right? Some of you, that might be monthly. Some of you, it might be weekly. Some of you, it might be daily, right? You make your money every day when you go out and go to work. Nothing wrong with that. Come on, right? The Lord bless you and keep you. Come on, amen? And uh, I know Hannah wants to be blessed with lots of scholarships, right? Her mama said yes, right? <laughs> amen, amen. And uh, we're going to send her to a mission field called the University of wherever she decides to go, right? Amen? And uh, trust for the Lord's leading in that, right? How many of you love the Lord today? Amen? I do. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Right. Don't just think about it. Go ahead and do it. The, uh, you know, one of the most exciting things is God is just good to us, right? Even when I'm bad, God's good. Right? He loves me enough that he sends Holy Spirit to say, now, son, you need to adjust that a little bit, right? The Holy Spirit can do more in our lives in a moment than we can trying to fix it ourselves in a lifetime, right? Amen. Well, it's obvious we have a guest speaker today. I'm trying to get my preaching in, right? Amen. Love you guys. If you would, I'm sure I have one here. Would you take a tithe and offering envelope, please? And uh, hold that in your hand. I want to encourage you to be a giver today right? A tither and a giver and a blesser and a releaser and a truster of God, right? Amen. God wants your whole life, right? He'll take whatever you give him, but his goal is all of you, all of me. Amen. So this morning, we're going to pray over and ask the Lord to bless our finances. Amen. You agree with me in prayer? Father God, I want to thank you for every household in this church. Every household under the power of my voice, I speak blessings on their business, on their household, on their jobs, on their bank accounts, their investments, uh, all the, the money that's going to come into their hands, I speak blessings on it in Jesus' name. And Lord, I'm asking you to do a mighty work in this church, Lord, that we would rise up, Lord, as a worshiping church, true worshipers in spirit and in truth, glorifying God Almighty. Amen. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. Would you stand with me all over the house this morning? If you're online, I'd stand up too. Get involved and you'll stay awake, right? I don't know about you, but I've gone to online church. I go to church every week somewhere online, right? Listen, but I usually do it while I'm moving about the planet so I won't fall asleep. It's a little more different. It's a, it is quite different to go online and try to stay engaged. Stand with us and take a tithe envelope, hold it up in the air. We're going to release. I'll get back to that. I got ahead of myself. Uh, faith declaration of kingdom finances. As we obey and give the Lord's tithes and offerings, we believe the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises, bonuses, and benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates, and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, gifts, debts demolished, and royalties received. Heavenly Father, we thank you that every chair here is filled with a person. We seek to be a debt-free church and a debt-free people. We declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated. There are several ways you can give at the Bridge Church. One is this is a mailing envelope. Put a stamp on the outside. I encourage you not to put cash money inside if you're going to mail it. And uh, it'd be best to use some other form, right, of giving. Uh, you can go to our website, thebridgefs.com. You can go to the Tithely app on your smartphone and use it. Or you can, if you forget, like sometimes people forget their checkbook at home, the last door to the north here is our office door. There's a mail slot there. Put it inside there, and it'll fall in the curtains, and we will find it, okay? And uh, Breezy sniffs out the giving every morning. I'm kidding, right? And uh, so praise the Lord. I want to encourage you to be a giver. Also, if you're in the room, right, there are buckets up here on the platform, and there are two tithe and offering boxes on the back wall. Amen? Smile at somebody. They're going to wonder what you've been up to, right? Where are all the bridge kids? Are they kicking this morning? The bridge kids. All right. Praise the Lord. Give them a hand. Come on. Let's celebrate the next generation, right? What about bridge youth? They're just sitting there. He forgot us, mama. He forgot us. I hadn't forgotten anything, but I did remember. All right, bridge youth, if you'll go back with Miss Carla and Brother Thomas and go to class back there, they have something cool for you to do too. All right? Amen. Y'all tired today? <laughs> Praise God. Well, one of the delights of being a pastor is having friends. And uh, I talk about all the time that we have a great missions program in our church. And uh, I'm not going to take the time to talk about all of that today. But we, we are a very giving church to the nations. Amen? Amen? Thankful that we are. Amen? I wish we had more in our budget to give, right? And uh, there are... I know you may not understand this, and I know it's cultural. It's hard to compare the United States to India. It's a whole different world there. $20 in their world will transport a pastor to a leadership class back home, give them money to buy dinner that night for their family, and a little bit of money left over, 20 bucks. And I'm telling you, they're coming from an hour, hour and a half away by transport, okay? That's different, is it not? And we, we, we helped do that, and through IGPN, another story I'm not going to get into, but we release finances and train a lot. Right now, we are training. We've added, right now, the nation of Kenya has been added, and their states are called counties. They must be very large because Kenya is a very large nation, and there are 60 counties and there are pastor training groups going on right now. It started in January, and every county, state is covered in uh, Kenya right now where we're training. There's smaller groups. We plan on having regional gatherings maybe once or twice a year where we bring more pastors together So, and, and financing that. But right now, we are giving into that, and some 1,000 pastors are meeting through Zoom call training that we're doing, our church is very involved in that. I personally am very involved in it. Most of the time, I can just tell you what that means. You get up at 3.30, 
to speak at 4.30, okay? And I have to get up at 3.30 to make sure I've had enough coffee that i got something to say, right? And uh, it's the truth. And uh, we may need to be doing that in the Czech Republic. I don't know. And uh, we would love to partner with you guys if we can do that. This is a friend of the Bridge Church. This is Stanislav Hart from the Czech Republic. And uh, many of you will know him, know who he is, and you're familiar with him. I want you to stand with me all over the room and give him a beginning clap offering this morning. Tell him you love him. And he's going to come and share what's going on in that part of the world. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I was thinking where, where were you going with the talk about India. Uh, I guess the Holy Spirit supernaturally revealed to you that we have one guy from India now coming to our church in the Czech Republic. He, his name is Sorop. He studies the, the university there. And he's a great guy. Uh, he's a Hindu and um, ha hasn't received Jesus as his Savior and Lord yet. But he started coming last June and he's more faithful than our average faith faithful member. He's just there every Sunday and he enjoys worship, enjoys the, the message and everything. They got many gods in the Indian concept, right? So it's easy to, uh, to accept one more. But, but we're praying for him that this would, this would change from, from Jesus being one of God's, a God, to he, he becoming the God of his life. Yeah. So things are not so cheap in the Czech Republic, though. <laughs> it's uh, inflation is terrible there. Maybe worse than here. Um, anyway, the Czech Republic, as you can see, uh, for those of you who may not know, is right in the middle, in the center of Europe. And um, used to be Czechoslovakia. Now it's Czech Republic and Slovakia. And um, I was born there in 1975. And until the age of 17, I never heard about God. I knew nothing about the concept of Christianity. The only thing I, I knew about Christianity was, was that uh, historically, that's what we were taught under communist regime, because I grew up under communism, under socialism. So we were taught that the church has always been the root of all the evil throughout the history. Sometimes it was true talking about the, the medieval organized church. But I, I just knew nothing about a personal relationship with Jesus. I never heard anybody. This is me when I was 17. As you can see, I was lost. I was confused. I had a longer hair. And I didn't know Jesus. At that point of time, I came to Wichita, Kansas as an exchange student. And uh, the, the family was connected to Fort Smith and they, they brought me to a Phil Driscoll concert right here in town. And that's where I heard the gospel for the first time. And God made himself known to me. And so I don't have time to tell you this whole story, but, but I wrote a little book and with, with this story, that's the green one and then the what was the color? Orange. <laughs> I only know like five different colors. My wife knows like a hundred different colors. <laughs> so <laughs> this is orange for me. Or it's a light red maybe. So, so the other one um, has a lot of testimonies from the ministry. So fast forward. Today, um, this, is, this is our family. Uh, we're doing really well. Kids are growing. We started a church uh, in Liberec, Czech Republic, and this upcoming summer, our oldest daughter is getting married. So that's a, that's a change. That's a game changer for us. Um, what happened during the, the one year that, that 
I wasn't here, or that Justin and Lucy weren't here. They say hello, by the way. They're still with us, uh, still doing well, and working for God. So last year we did, we did a camp for teens, which, which grew, it, it kind of like doubled in, in numbers. And we had a, we had a mission team from, from Oklahoma that, that came and in the next picture you can see uh, we played, the, the theme was Saddling of America. So they all got crazy and the kids loved it. <laughs> uh, George Washington is the second on the right. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the camp, the kids signed the Declaration of Independence. And uh, we had a great time. And they, they also came to, uh, to minister in our town. And we were being creative. And so some of them have Indian bloods in the, in, blood in them, very little. But still, they, are, they would qualify as Indian. So they dressed up in these Indian costumes. And we had a, uh, twice during the week, we did like an like a event for the public that the, the real Indians came from America to tell you about the Indian life uh, historically and today. And we invited people and we had, uh, well, they, they, would, they would be like on the, in front of the church building, walking on the sidewalk like, like, fifth, like half an hour before the program started and people people would slow down their cars and and wave and 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 do like doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so it was a good thing so so we had like 12 people come to this event that we we never saw um, at the church including one neighbor like who's who is a neighbor right next door um, and until that time this neighbor because let me, some of you heard, heard this from me before, but uh, in our part of the world, the communists just, uh, they did a good job uh, in like persuading everybody that church is evil. And people, people really hate church, many of them. I, I don't want to confess it because I know the words have power. Now pe we, we say that people love church, but, but that was the situation in which we started church. We started a church in a town where nobody was interested in church. Nobody was, nobody was wanting, looking for a church. Like here, maybe I, I've met people who are looking maybe for a church, but, but nobody was looking for a church. And there was, our town was 100, is 160,000 people, uh, double the size of Fort Smith. Guess how many churches were there when we were starting? Three. Three, Three small churches. Okay. So the, the neighbor who lives right, right next door to the church would, and now I'm getting into the message, uh, I, would, I would build relationship with him, you know, because I go to a church every day to, to work. So whenever I see him, I, I just talk to him and we just, we just chat and I just tell him that he did a great job cutting the grass or whatever. And, and we built a relationship. And I, se several times I told him, do you want to come in just, just to look around to see how, wh what we did after, after we, we purchased this building? And he says, no, 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 thank you, thank you. So people, people are scared to even walk inside the church. Well, when we had this Indian program, uh, he came and he was excited because he loves, the, the, he loves to talk and about Indians. He just loves it, about the Native American Indians. So, so he came, he was excited and something changed. And then we went to, a, to another um, place downtown in Liberace and maybe, maybe some 30, 40 people came to, to, to hear, hear them talk. And 95% was about Native Americans and blah, 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 blah. But then there was the gospel in there as well. Because, because you, we are fishermen of men, fishermen of people's souls. So, so you put bait and then, and then you catch the fish. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, next picture. We are 
so we keep on building relationships, building community. Um, this girl on the right, she's, she's from the Netherlands and she studied, there's an international university in our town, so she brought the Indian guy, actually. And, um, and we, we just built relationships. And next, I want to show you, this is kind of what's new. The picture at the top was from the fifth year celebration of our church. And the one below is just a few weeks ago from the, when we celebrated 20 years of our church. Uh, it's growing, it's growing. God is bringing people because God loves people. But we cannot stop there. And because the secular people are very physical, so, so they we found out that we that they need to see where their church is you know so some six years ago thanks to god's grace we we managed to purchase this little house which is ours we um i was talking to the pastor in a in a place smaller than this section we have the stage the sound system the <laughs> the welcome center everything and 90 chairs uh, we don't have how do you call the, the space in yeah we don't have the comfort of having aisles <laughs> just just very small just to, just to get through you know. <laughs> but uh, God's God's blessing us and, and people keep coming and I'm scared of Sometimes I'm, in my head, I'm a little bit scared when some, somebody prays, oh God, bring more and more and more people. And I'm like, like, what shall we do? But yes, we keep praying like this. <clears throat> so the next, our next step is we already have pictures of, of our new future church building, including a watchtower. And it's, it's really beautiful. And we just trust that God will lead us. And just before I got on the plane to come here, we signed a contract with uh, uh, architects that will make blueprints. The blueprints itself, three different sets of blueprints will cost $100,000. So we are not India, unfortunately, but, but we believe our God is big and he can, he can make this happen. So the pastor asked me to preach today, not, not just give a mission report. Okay, this is, this is like a, some more details. And it will be in Europe, in here you build this way. In Europe, you have to build this way because there's not enough space. So we'll have like three floors of the administrative building or like with like a cafe welcome center and then the youth room and then another youth room and office. We go up and then we have the, the worship center with a balcony. So. So we're planning for like some 300 people to, to fit in there. Uh, if we eliminate aisles even more, <laughs> maybe 500. <laughs> okay. So, um, pastor told me to, to pray and to, to, bring, to bring a message. Then I, I prayed and then I said, pastor, uh, you may not invite me back. <laughs> And he said, go ahead. And then I read on Facebook that you, you wrote something like, we need to preach the truth, whether it fills the room or empties the room. So today I'm preach I will preach the truth from my heart, whether I get invited back or not. Okay. <laughs> so it's called radical love. Um, I don't know if it's good to be a radical all the time. The word radical, it seems like extreme, but I, I, I believe that God is radical in definitely in at least in one aspect, and that's love. His love for us is so radical that he gave his only son. And as other scriptures say, he, he came himself, he became flesh and died on the cross for our sins. That's how radical his love is. 
when he was hanging on that cross. So his love was so radical that he says, oh God, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing, right? So if I show you the next picture, I'm wondering what kind of emotions does it, does it create in you, if you can see it. Um, we may have all kinds of emotions, maybe disgust, maybe we may be judgmental, but I believe when God looks at these pictures, he can see that he feels compassion because we are living in a, in a world where people are confused and people are hurting. And in our world and, and it's definitely here as well, just not, not so much of it. But there's people who's, who have never been to church, who don't know how to behave in church, and who are lost, hurting, and far, far away from God, just like I was when, when I was 17. And I'd like to look at two different characters in the Bible. The first one is the Samaritan woman. So I'll read from John 4. This is the NLT, John 4, 7. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with the Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? And then they talk. And then at one point Jesus says, go and get your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says, you are right. You do not have a husband. For you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with right now. You certainly spoke the truth. So Jesus <clears throat> meets this woman who is Samaritan. And Samaritans were traitors because they, they uh, left the covenant of, of Moses and they, so, so Jews did not even talk to them. So this lady was despised by the Jews, but she was also looked, up, looked down upon by her own people. Because she, is, she comes to the well in the middle of the day alone, but ladies were coming to the, to the well in groups. It was a great social thing, it was a social event. And when, when we read that she came alone, we, we can feel that she was alone, that, she, that people looked down on her. And um, why was that? Because if we make a quick judgment, we would say she was sexual, sexually immoral, right? She was a scandal. She was living with a man and not married to him. Well, but if we look at Jesus' heart, if, if we look at, at God's heart, if we look at this woman with, with the love of God, we can see this lady who already has a six man. And, and when you think, so what happened? How come, how come she, she's not married anymore? How come this is her sixth man and she, she didn't even get married? Well, there's, there's only two options or a combination of both options. Option number one is that her first five husbands died and that, that must have hurt. 
and she, she could she could even say, "God, why is this happen? God, why is this happening to me?" Five times. Option number two is that she got divorced five times. And option number three, that it was a combination of both. Some of her husbands died, some, some, some of them they, she got divorced with. But in that culture, if, if you read the Old Testament rules, it was always the man who divorced the woman, who filed for divorce. And, and the old, so the, it was never her who divorced the guy. And the Old Testament says that if a man, if a husband finds a flaw in her wife, that he can divorce her, that he can file for divorce. And then the Pharisees and the Sadducees discussed with Jesus what that flaw really means. And, and, and he was explaining this. So can you imagine that, that maybe five times the husband comes to this, to this girl after a year or two and says, I find a flaw in you, you're no good, I'm filing for divorce. And this might have happened five different times. Or she might, maybe she, maybe she lost some of her husbands because they died. So the point is, this, this lady, this dear lady, was hurting. And she was hurting so much that she said, I don't want to marry again. I'd rather just, just stay with this guy and not, not really marry him because I don't want to be hurt anymore. And she was alone, like I said. She felt alone. Okay. Do you feel sorry for this, for this lady? And what did Jesus do? He could see right through and he came and offered her the living water, different kind of water, because when, when she would drink from that well of, the, of God's water, she will not thirst any longer. So he's showing her God's love. And when she tries to do a theological discussion where to worship on this holy Samaritan um, hill or mountain or in Jerusalem, Jesus says, doesn't matter. God is with you always. Like we are experiencing today at worship. He says, God is looking for people who will worship him in truth and in, in spirit. Well, the second person is Zacchaeus. And we, we read in Luke 19 about Zacchaeus. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through, through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notor notorious sinner. They grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. And Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. The Samaritan woman may, may um, string a cord in us, may, 
bring uh, sympathy in us. But this, but Zacchaeus, if we let uh, our flesh rule us, we would hate Zacchaeus. Number one, he was a tax collector. And who wants to pay taxes, right? He was the chief tax collector in the region of Jericho. He was employed by the Romans, by the enemies. So he was a traitor. He was a collaborator. Is that the word? Collaborator and traitor to the values of their nation, of their beloved Israeli nation. Czech Republic historically has always been one of biggest uh, friends of Israel, by the way. Probably, probably the only very much pro-Israeli country in Europe today. Unfortunately, unfortunately. But this guy was not pro-Israeli. We could say, I could go as far as to say in, in our today's world, he was, he was maybe working for Palestine. He was maybe working for the, for the worst enemy, for, for Iran, whoever. He was a perfect example of a political opponent. He had the worst set of political views. This is the point when you can think I'm just a confused foreigner, okay? I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he, would, he was the voter of your least favorite future uh, senator or president or whatever. He was a cheater. His character was twisted. Not only did he serve the, the, the enemy, the, the Romans, but he, he collected more than he was supposed to collect and put some, and quite a lot, into his own pocket. His character was twisted. And what does Jesus do? He invites him. Oh, him, he invites himself, actually, to, to his home. Um, what, I, what I just said, did I mean to say that we should not have our strong political views? I will come, still come back to it. No way, we should. I, I have very strong political views. Just, just for your information, I'm, I'm very rightist. I, I think it's, it's great to have a government, but very small government, and just, just taking care of the necessary things that the government can do better than individuals. I have a, I have a very strong set of political opinions. But I'm wanting to build relationships, just like Jesus did, with everybody. And I saw on your websites, it's, it's on the front page of the Bridge website, that everybody is welcome here. Everybody. And I, and I, and I, want, and I want to challenge you to, to, to make this happen. That everybody will be welcome. Somebody said, vow to a church in front of which you don't find, find cigarette butts. <laughs> what does that mean? Should the pastor encourage people to, to start smoking? No, no, no. Our, our body is the temple of the, of the Holy Spirit. But it means that we, we want to see the outsiders come in. We want to lose our little comfort zone. And we want to, we want to see really weird people come, right? Like I said, we have, we have, a, we have an Indian guy who, who does not eat beef. Can you imagine? and think it's, it's holy. And we have to respect and accept them as they are. So he was the worst political opponent. He was a cheater. Also, we, we read that he was small. He might have had a complex. People have different complexes. I always used to have a complex that I'm too, too large, too big, too tall. And that my hair is curly. It was my, my big complex from childhood. We all have our complexes, but this guy was, had a complex as well. But one thing he had in common with the Samaritan woman, 
that he was alone. When he wanted to see Jesus, and he, was, he would say, excuse me, excuse me, and nobody would let him go forward because everybody hated him. Everybody in Samaria looked, da looked down at this woman and everybody in the, re in the Jericho region not just looked down but, but plainly hated Zacchaeus. He was alone. Six years ago, well, let me say like this, loneliness, loneliness is a big problem of, of today's world. People may have 300 friends on social media, but no, no one really to talk to in real life. Six years ago, the UK established, established Ministry for lon Loneliness. Did you know that? They have a minister in the government, Minister for, lo for Loneliness. The role of this ministry is to fight loneliness and to, to uh, lift up opportunities for people to meet community centers, including church community centers, just any opportunities for people to meet and to not feel the sense of isolation. They started this ministry for loneliness because they found out that from different um, uh, researches that 14% of the UK population suffers from loneliness. And that's like, it means like every day they, they feel lonely. 14% of the nation. Japan followed suit three years ago and started the Ministry for Loneliness as well. And that's where we can step in. That's, we, that's where Jesus can step in. That's where you and I can do our part. So, <clears throat> what does radical love do? Radical love does two things which are seemingly contradictory, but they are complementary. They work together. Number one, radical love does not judge and connects and builds a relationship with no strings attached. You just build a relationship. You just love this guy even though he's not eating pork or, or um, beef or any meat. You, lo you love this girl, this lady, even though she's living with someone who is not her husband. You, you, you love people even, even if they are a girl who are thinking that they are a boy or vice versa. You just accept everybody. Radical love is so radical that it does not argue, argue and that it just accepts, does not judge. But number two, number two, and this is not contradictory, this is complementary. Number two, what radical love does is that radical love, once a relationship is, has been established, preaches the uncompromised, life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I, I experienced this in my own life. No church program, no church fellowship, whatever group could change my life, but Jesus could change my life. And so we need to preach the sharp, clear, uncompromised message of the cross and of Jesus. Amen. So what I'm trying to suggest, sh should we be a seeker-friendly church or should we be a, a gospel-preaching church? What I'm saying, yes, yeah, this sister did like this. We must be both because Jesus was both. I'm always amazed how, how witty, how smart, how, how awesome Jesus was in connecting with people. He always knew what to say, except for one group, the religious leaders, the religious guys. <laughs> Somehow he didn't know how to, how to talk to them, always made them angry. <laughs> so that's fine, that's fine. <clears throat> but he knew how to hang out with the sinners. 
they, they even the religious elite even called him the, the friend of the sinners and of tax collectors, a drinker and uh, someone who eats so much. At, I don't know how to say it in English. You know what I mean? Okay, I love this. I, I love this next verse that I want to share, which is Acts 15, 19. And I prepared like four different translations. The context is whenever the gospel, the gospel began to reach out to the pagans, to, the, to people who didn't know how to behave in church, the people who had no background in the Old Testament, the non-Jewish, world, the Greeks, and so forth. Um, some of the Jewish brothers said that, that the new believers need to get circumcised, the, the guys need to get circumcised, and they, they should keep this and that, and blah, 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 keep the Sabbath, and, and so forth. And so, so there was a big con uh, council in Jerusalem, and at the end of the council, James said the summary of, of, of this council. And that's Acts 15, 19. Basically, the, the, the outcome was, no, they don't need to get circumcised. They don't need to keep the Old Testament. It's, it's enough that they, they receive the Messiah, that they receive Jesus. And just, just they named a few practical things, you know, like, like that they should not eat meat with blood and stuff like that. But the the sentence which seems very, very interesting to me. It's Acts 15, 19. King James Version says, wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. We should not trouble those who are coming from the Gentiles. CJB, this is like a, like a Jewish, special Jewish translation. Therefore, my opinion is that we should not put obstacles in the way of the goyim, those are the non-Jewish, who are turning to God. We should not put obstacles in their way. And LT says, we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. And MS Message Bible says, we're not going to unnecessarily burden the non-Jewish people. What am I trying to say? How do I connect with people and not scare them away? How do I become a Jew to the Jews and a Greek to the Greeks? I have a few questions for you to, to think about. Number one, do you speak English or Biblish? Do you still speak English? <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird if, you know, if, if we think about those, those people outside, what do we need to communicate to them? We need to communicate to them that Jesus loves them, and that we love them, and that the source of our love is, is God's love, and that he sent his son Jesus on the cross. That's all. We don't have to quote the Bible 24-7. We don't have to say, praise the Lord, amen, hallelujah, every five times in, in, in 10 minutes. Because then we become weird. And back to my previous verse, we put obstacles in the way. And we trouble them who are, who are supposed to get saved. Next question, please consider. Do you have friends among the non-believers? Do you have an unsaved, unchurched friend? It's okay to admit you don't. But it's, it's important to, like at every therapy, you know, like somebody who has a drinking problem, the first step to get healed is to, to admit, I have a drinking problem. And he, some of you may have a problem that you've been living in a Christian ghetto for years. 
we are fort fortunate in this aspect, it's really difficult to happen to us. But even, even for us, it's, it's easy to get, to, to, to only have friends in church. So we always encourage one another, make a friend from outside of the church. Try to, try to befriend your neighbor, try to befriend your work colleague, try to befriend a family member who is not saved. Try to be there even for the most unlikely one to get saved. Because sometimes, because we never know. Sometimes they are the closest to the kingdom of God. I, I saw that happen many times. So I challenge you to make a friend among the non-believers. Next question. What do you post on social media? If you are on social media, what do you post? Is it, is it ever in English or is it always in Biblish? Is it always like, some people have, have a good heart and good intention and they're, they're, God changed our lives so much that we want to share it with everybody. But I, I, I made, I've made some mistakes in my own life. After I got saved, I, I called, I, I told my family, family circle, I called like 10, different, 10 people, like my, my mom and my dad and my sister and my grandma. Like I called everybody into the living room and I said, I have a big announcement to tell you. I need to tell you something. And I told them that Jesus changed my life and I thought they would get saved immediately. So I had brochures for them, ready. And, and I said, hey, it's serious. If, if, if you don't receive Jesus, you end up in hell. And hell is terrible. And I began to describe what hell looks like. And I, I, my, my dad got angry. He slammed the door and said that I go from one extreme to another, from, from drugs and, 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 and drinking to, to being a religious fanatic. Jesus knew how to connect. Jesus was not a fanatic. He was not speaking Biblish, if you know what I mean. He was, talk, he was speaking lots of scriptures all the time. He was, he was like full of the word of God, of course. But it came just so naturally. And it happened to me like some time ago during COVID time, this principal from one school where our kids went to school, used to go to school. So he called me and he said, we didn't, didn't have a relationship at all. And he said, we just knew we existed, but, but he said, uh, can we talk? I have, I have some troubles in my life. And, and we began to talk and I'm, and I'm listening to his problems and just listening and just, just talking back a little bit and listening. And, and he's talking about his career and he's kind of stuck in his career. And I said, well, this reminds me of the story of Joseph in the Old Testament. And I would like to encourage you to just be faithful, just like Joseph was faithful to his values, to his morals. And I began to give him a little taste of, of what the Bible is about. And after a while, he says, wow, I was afraid of this conversation. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It took a lot of courage for me to, to contact you and to, to talk to you. I was, I was afraid you were going to beat me with the Bible. <laughs> but I must admit, I, I enjoy talking about the Bible stories. <laughs> so we need to connect first. Next question is a question maybe to your pastor and to your lead team. We may discuss this later if, if we want to. Are your Sunday services both spiritual and understandable to the brokenhearted? Will people understand if they come from, from the street? Will they understand what's going on here? We've made some changes. In, in the past two or three years, in the structure of our services, in the vocabulary that we use in the services. We did no changes as for like, we did not sugar melt the message. We still keep the same message. In fact, right before I got to come here, four people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues on, on Sunday. <laughs> But we, what we always talk in the, in, the, in the team of the people who are responsible for the services, like we always analyze like what did we do well, what, what could we improve, 
what, uh, what, what kind of words we use and stuff like that. So again, we need to be Jews to the Jews and Greek to the Greek. Um, and we need to connect. We learn by mistakes. Um, I'll tell you a, a story. So a few years ago, we did a, it was like a graffiti um, contest. So we hired this, uh, we got a permit to organize a graffiti contest under a highway bridge that these street teenagers who, who sometimes take drugs and spray, you know, graffiti so that they can come and we, we offered them that the church paid the base paint and we, we ordered pizza and we had, we had like a sound system and played music and at one point, at, towards the end, I, I got, got up to speak and I, and I began to talk to these people. I said, hey guys, um, I just want to tell you my story. And I said, I said how, how um, I used to take drugs and just hang out on the streets and, and I, I drank so much and I, I took drugs. And, and then, then at one point, I met God and he, he changed my life. And, and I have a great new life, I'm happy, and look, these are my kids, and this is my wife. My, my kids were small at that time. And, and they were really attentive, you know, they really listened, and wow, like, it was awesome. Like, one of the guys, at least that I know, is already saved from, from this uh, session, from this meeting, serves God today. But, but many, many lives were touched. So it worked really well, and then about a month later, we got invited to, to speak to a, to a group of seniors in a senior home. And it was Easter time. And I thought, well, it worked so well on the streets, so I'll do the same. So, so we come to the senior home, and I come up and I say, hello, my name is so-and-so, and I'll tell you my story. When I was young, I used to take drugs, and I drank so much, and, and and I was, and I, and I could see that the, the seniors were confused, you know, like. And then I said, "Okay, let me explain you the the purpose, the the meaning of uh, Easter." So the first Easter was celebrated back in Egypt when Israelis were leaving Egypt, and they were supposed to kill a lamb and spray the blood all over their their doors. And one gentleman, one old man you know, got angry, got up and left. And then, then everybody else was confused. And, and when I was thinking about it later, they were definitely thinking like, why did they send a drug addict to talk to us about blood? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so what worked under the highway bridge with the teenagers did not work in the senior home. Fortunately, one other guy was there with me and he stood up when he saw what was going on and he said, well, let me tell you my story. First off, I want to tell you that I'm, I'm already a grandpa. I have two little granddaughters and he showed the pictures of the granddaughters. And everyone was like, <laughs> and, then, and then he said his testimony and his testimony was that some years ago he got seriously sick ended up in the hospital and he was almost dying. And Jesus healed him and saved him. And, and he got their attention. He got their attention. Because I don't know about seniors here in the United States, but seniors in Czech Republic like to talk about two things. <laughs> their grandkids and their sicknesses. <laughs> so you connect well with them. <laughs> when you talk to a senior, you know, it's great to talk about your, your kids, grandkids, or what, whatever hurts, and like what kind of physical problems you have. <laughs> okay, so we need to connect. And number two, and this is, I'm coming to, towards the end of the message, uh, we need to preach the gospel. So what is, my, what is our task in reaching people? How do we preach the gospel? You'll be surprised, but number one is we need to be, be, a living testimony because our lives speak more loudly than our words. 
Jesus said, let your good deeds shine out for all people to see. We need to just love on people. I know I've, I've been sharing a, a story here before. I, I, I will make it short this time. But, but we, had a, we had a neighbor, next door neighbor, who was sick, had cancer, a lady. When, and and we, just, we just felt just, just God put her on our hearts very, very much. And so we would just love on her. We would bring her cakes, and, and uh, when we went shopping, we, we, we asked her if she needed to, to get some groceries. When I would go mow my lawn, I would mow her lawn as well, and we just laughed on her. And long story short, my wife led her to, to Jesus 10 minutes before this lady died. 10 minutes before she left this world, she accepted Jesus as her Savior and Lord. So. We need to be a living testimony because that will melt people's hearts. Do not, let's not try to correct or change people. Oh, brother, shame on you, long hair, <laughs> all kinds of necklaces. You should not wear this in the house of the Lord. No, everybody's welcome whether they come wearing a suit and tie or whether they come in, a, in shorts and a cap. Everybody. We, we, we don't correct people. You should not blaspheme the, the name of the Lord. They don't know be any better. They're not saved yet. You shouldn't smoke. They don't know any better. They got no help, and it's, sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult even, even with Jesus living inside of you. What helped me years ago was the verse about the body being the temple of the Spirit. So I thought, well, it just hit me. But you, you need a revelation. And my point is, we need to preach the clear, uncompromised gospel. Like Paul says, I dis I've, I've made my mind to, to know Christ only and Christ crucified. Nothing else. We're not preaching a better lifestyle. We're not preaching uh, get, get right, you know, like, like become holy and then perhaps God will receive you. No, no. Only God can change a person's heart. And he, he's after people. And he wants to send you. You guys not know or heard of Todd White? The guy with the dread, you know? He's an expert evangelist. He's, he's a, I have a lot of respect for him. He, he just spreads out the love of God and he just connects with people and then preaches the gospel and gets people saved. But I got news for you. Todd White will most probably not come into your neighborhood, <laughs> into your workplace, into your family. It's gonna have to be you. And when we pray, God, send out the laborers on the harvest, you're praying for yourself. God wants to send out you, send you out. So let us be a beacon of Jesus in this lost and hurting world. This world is hurting, confused. Let us be a beacon of hope of Jesus. I want to encourage you. So that's why we want to, want to open up this, this community center and this, this it's a beautiful night view and, and to, sh to just show that there is hope in this world, that God loves people. So again, if you, if you want to know more, I got, I got these books back there, very cheap. Uh, tips will come. <laughs> and can we stand up please and can, can I pray for you? Hallelujah. God, I thank you that you've, uh, your, thank you for your love, so radical, so extreme, that you became one of us in Christ Jesus to pay the penalty, to pay the full price for our sin. Thank you, Lord, that it's easy to evangelize. We just need to learn how to connect, 
how to speak English again, how to talk to people about their hobbies, their interests, how to, how to just love on them and, and walk with them and, and be there for them. And I pray that everybody who does not have an unsafe friend in this room or uh, in the online world, that we would get a friend who is not safe. And I pray that this friendship and just listening to them would enrich us, that we would get a better understanding of how they're thinking, of what do they think about the church, what do they think about the Jesus freaks, so that we, are, we do not become a Jesus freak to them, but that we become a good friend, a good Christian friend, and that they would open up their hearts to the gospel and eventually become saved. I pray for all the lost loved ones in the families of the people of this church. I pray for all the lost co-workers, neighbors, just everybody that we meet in Walmart, in the streets, in the neighborhood, wherever we are. I pray that we become a beacon of, of the light of Jesus in this world. And if you agree to this dangerous, it's a dangerous prayer, but if you agree, say amen. God may take you out of your comfort zone, I'm warning you. God may even take this church out of, out of its comfort zone, but it's a good thing. God bless you. Yes. Tell him thank you. You may be seated. Obviously, his English is better than our Czech, right? And uh, uh, um, sugar washing, right? A sugar coating, right? And uh, very good. It, we understood what he meant, right? And uh, I've preached in many different countries, and I don't speak any other language. I don't speak English well, I'm told. And uh, right? And uh, praise God. We really appreciate your heart and what you have brought today. And uh, if this church would obey this message from today forward, we would never have enough buildings to hold the people, right? That's the truth. Thank you, thank you. This, um, how many of you noticed that in the beginning, his first character in the Bible was the Samaritan woman? We've been preaching on that since January. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're not finished yet, okay? John 4. Right now, it's, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Praise God. So I knew you were on the right track with radical love, right? And uh, uh, I'm going to hand you back the mic. It's still on. Uh, tell us what's going on. And if the green light's on, it's on. Um, the Ukraine war that's going on. I know last time you were here, you all had a lot of refugees that you were helping. Tell us a little bit about your perspective. You live a lot closer to the war than we do. Uh, the perspective of what's going on in your region, not your neighborhood, but what's the worldview there, okay? Well, um, I kind of, kind of could um, estimate that this would happen. Um, people get tired, of course, of helping refugees, you know. It's, it's, People are excited in the beginning, but then they get tired. And of course, with the real refugees, even some people come who just misuse the situation and stuff like that. So as, as for our church, so when the war broke, war broke out, we had like 50 people mm -hmm. from Ukraine in our church, um, the refugees, but, but now they're all gone. They either returned back because they were from the Kyiv uh, region, which is safe, so they, they didn't know if it would be safe, you know, at right. the first days. So, so many of them went back. Some of them stayed, but they, um, one pastor from Ukraine came. So there's a Ukrainian church in town now. Okay. So we only have two families from Ukraine, which we already had before the war started. So, okay. so they're like rooted and settled. Um, what everybody is talking about is one that the Ukrainian people are like, have changed the demographics of Europe because 
I think like 10 million Ukrainians are scattered, still yeah. scattered. So mm -hmm. in the Czech Republic, it's like 300,000 people. So number one, people are thinking like, are, aren't these people taking our jobs or something like that? But, and, and some people are thinking, no, it's good to help them. And of course, so there's, a, there's a mixture you know, of feelings. And then there's a mixture of feelings like about what the war should, uh, it's, it's divided, you know, maybe right, it's maybe right. same here. Like it's some political people, really quick. Too. Some people are, are saying, well, um, somebody should make a deal with, with Ukraine and, and Russia and stop the war, but, uh, but then they would have to give up some of their land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So people are thinking like if, if Donald Trump becomes president, so he may make such a deal and is, is it really good or is it not good? Stuff mm -hmm. like that. Right, right. Okay, so, thank you. A lot thank of discussion. Uh, we need to say thank you to Pastor Stan and his church because when these people were in need, they ramped up and made it happen, right? They took them in like family. They ministered to them. They loved them. And they brought restoration. If they've gone home, they did. They fulfilled their assignment, right? And uh, we, our hats are off to you for doing that. And uh, we appreciate that. I, I haven't had a lot of time yet today to check on Israel. Um, yesterday, about 2 p.m. our time, uh, word was released that Iran had sent drones to Israel to attack it. The report that I do have, and that came from Stanislav, uh, he was listening to the news this morning. Most all of those uh, drones were taken out and did not make it to Israel. Uh, and we call that, thank God for the Iron Dome and thank God for the Holy Ghost Dome, right? Amen. And uh, God has answered prayer for Israel, and we're very thankful for that. Amen? Amen. Um, take your tithe envelope. I know we haven't dismissed yet, but I'm going to do this quickly. I want you to understand at the Bridge Church how we operate when we have a guest missionary come in. We will uh, have an offering for Stanislav and the ministry there in the Czech Republic and Liberec, but we also want to give you the opportunity to sow good seed, finance, money into good soil. They are doing great things in the kingdom of God. Amen? And I want to encourage everybody at the bridge to do something. Some of you can do a lot. Some of you can just do something, right? And uh, he is their ministry is very accountable. And uh, not only, if you, you say, well, pastor, I wish I had it, but It'd be a few weeks before I could get it. Well, praise the Lord. We are an equal opportunity receiver of gifts, all right? I'm going to give you the next 30 days, which is mid-May, to get your offerings in. So if you would, you say, you know what? I can, I can do that, whatever the amount. For some of you, again, it may be minimal. Some of you, it could be great, okay? I want you to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. I want you to do your best. Everybody here... Everybody online, okay? We're expecting you to, to make an effort to help them in their ministry, right? Good seed from this house sown into good soil in the Czech Republic is going to produce great fruit here, right? Our seed comes up here, right? We're planting it there, but we will receive the impact of it, okay? Right? So do something. If you don't have anything today to give, Write on uh, an envelope and just put there, uh, just C-Z-E-C-H. That's Czech. I don't know if you get that up there. It stands for the Czech Republic. You can't do anything else. Put C-Z, okay? And uh, inside the offering envelope, it has a place for other, and uh, it also has a place for missions, either place you want to put it. And if it's, a, if it's a, a, a promissory note, I'm giving you my word, Pastor, in the next 30 days, I'll give this amount. Just put the amount to be given, okay? And if you have it today and you want to put it in the offering today, go ahead and put it in the envelope. And then, of course, we have the boxes in the back and we have the buckets on the platform and online. Thank you very much. Good job. And, uh, uh, and mess me up. For those of you online, uh, thank you uh, for being in service today. But I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Find a way to sow seed into some place outside of your world. You may never go to Europe, 
But he's going back to Europe. He has a wife and kids there and a daughter that's dependent on him to help get her married, right? And that's a wonderful thing. By the way, she was the youth pa- is the youth pastor of the church, and now her husband has come alongside her, and they're doing ministry together. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, so we want to we wanna be a blessing to stand the ministry there and all that God's doing. Amen? Amen. So you be faithful with your finances. I'm going to pray. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give and to be a part of what is going on in the Czech Republic. Lord, we've seen just a picture, an idea of a building that they need built there, and we speak it into existence in Jesus' name. And Lord, let this be a small portion, a seed portion that we are putting into, and Lord, we are expecting fruit that remains and souls and the buildings that are needed to do ministry there. And we speak all of that in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Lord, we lift up Gino to you, and I see you, God. We ask that you minister to him, spirit, soul, and body, and to Walt and Pam as they are there with him in Jesus' name. Everybody said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you for being at the bridge today. We love you guys. Yes. Yes, the booklets are in the back on the table, right? Oh, pay for the books. They're $50 each. Charlie, five bucks each. Sir, eight for both, five dollars each. Um, praise the Lord. And then uh, there's a basket back there you can put your money in, okay? God bless you. Y'all have a great week. Remember Family Sunday, next Sunday, vision casting. And be here, bring, bring some of your church family with you. Bring a friend because... The bridge is about what he spoke today, okay? God bless you. Thank you.